Hi everybody, I welcome you all uh, in the today's lecture uh, where uh, you will be introduced about the aerospace industries and apart from that you will be given an exposure to various kind of aerospace regulating authorities like IATA, FAA, right, DGCA and all. Right, so let's uh, start uh, the presentation. We will see one by one what all these are. So if we look at the content of uh, today's presentation is uh, introduction to Indian aerospace industry. Then second uh, is aerospace MRO agencies. MRO is nothing but maintenance, repair and overall. Third one is aviation safety agencies. Then we will go for aircraft certifications and regulatory bodies. And lastly, we will cover the aerospace manufacturing and industries. So, if we look at the Indian aerospace uh, industry historical prospect, uh, perspective, the first aircraft company which was, uh, uh, you know, established in India was in 1940, which was Hindustan Aircraft Limited. It was it was established by Seth Balchan Hirachan. This company later merged with Aeronautics India Limited and Aircraft Manufacturing Depot Kanpur to form India's largest aerospace major Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL that we know uh, at present. Then in 1942 uh, IASC was developed Indian Institute of Science uh, was formed as well as Council for Scientific and Industrial Research was established CSIR. Followed by in 1948, Aeronautical Society of India was uh, established. The purpose of Aeronautical Society of India is to integrate engineers, professionals and industrialists towards a common goal of furthering the growth of aerospace sector in India. So, uh, the first patron chief was the Prime Minister of India, then uh, Jawala Nehru, right, in 1948, it was uh, uh, the first patron chief and every year, uh, whenever government is changing the patron chief is the prime minister of india then in 1958 the drdo was set up followed by a national aerospace laboratory in 1959 and 1964 hindustan aeronautics as uh, all those companies you know uh, together form and hl form in 1964 all right so today we look at uh, these DRTO uh, has a network of uh, over 50 laboratories which are engaged in developing defense technologies covering disciplines like aeronautics, armaments, electronics, combat vehicles, engineering systems, instrumentation, missiles, advanced computing and simulation and space materials. All right, so it is having more than 50 laboratories right at present and National Aerospace Laboratories is also uh, uh, an autonomous uh, institution which is which has which has engaged in various research activities and it is also having more than you know 30 uh, laboratories which are state of art facilities right advanced composites or special materials all right after 2001 right basically the defense production opens uh, to the private sector before prior to 2001 everything was managed by these uh, you know government uh, organizations later on after 2001 when privatization came into the effect now all you know private companies are also taking the tenders to develop the defense equipments right in their own company so, uh, as I said, prior to 2001, the aerospace and defense industry were exclusively reserved for PSUs, public sector units, alright. So, consequently, these public sector units have grown tremendously by developing, acquiring new technologies and entering into the manufacturing of indigenous aircraft. So, over the year, PSU has gained a lot of, you know, knowledge in, you know, designing and developing uh, the indigenous uh, equipments particularly DIDO right DIDO are much ahead they are they they are they are expert uh, they are having expertise particularly you know defense equipment uh, production manufacturing all right so how actually they have come up uh, to uh, this level by acquiring technology technical managerial process and better quality standards all right so basically the experience of these you know uh, PSUs are uh, have also you know helped the small uh, players in the aerospace sectors to gain the knowledge and to contribute so in addition to uh, this 
several private sector groups such as Tata's, L&T, Larson and Turbo, Mahindra and Mahindra, Kiloskas and large number of smaller companies have been supplying limited parts, right and equipment to the armed forces and PSUs. In 2001, the government allowed 100% domestic private investment in the defense sector upon obtaining an industrial license and FTI of up to 26% with conditions, allowing private uh, you know, investment to begin to attract number of Indian companies into this sector. All right. So over the year, rapid growth of industry has attracted global measures to come in India and invest. So basically, Indian aerospace uh, is basically divided into three parts, right? Uh, civil aviation, military aviation, and space research. So if we look at the civil aviation in 2007 and 2008, India assumed the ninth position in the world's civil aviation market and increased from uh, 12th place in 2006. India's air passenger travel has been growing at almost 25% a year. According to the government, you know, estimation growth in the sector will outpace the global average by 2025. If we look at the military aviation, secondary research indicates that India will spend about US dollar 35 billion on military aviation over the next 20 years because most of the existing fleet needs to be replaced. Right. The Indian Army has projected a figure of 500 helicopters and is, they are in the process of purchasing uh, 197 helicopter as soon as possible. So if we look at the Indian you know, aircraft, particularly fighter aircrafts, all fighter aircrafts are now abs absolutes, right? They, they are basically, you know, all are old, they need to be replaced. So uh, in coming 10 years, you know, India is going to invest a huge budget, particularly in strengthening the military aviation. So if we look at the space, India is one of the sixth country in the world that undertakes space launches. Indian Space Research Organization under the Department of Space Government of India implements the Indian space programs involving developing and operation of satellites, launch vehicles, ground systems for carrying out research and applications related to communications, remote sensing, meteorology and space science. So, if we look at the trends emerging in Indian aerospace includes an increase in private owned airlines plus increase in high net worth individual corporate jets, helicopters, increased outsourcing manufacturing activities occurring in India, the government's easing of regulatory norms that would further increase the pace of activity in Indian aerospace and increased defense acquisition program over the next 10 years. So, government has eased a lot of regulations, a lot of, you know, private players uh, or you can say the global players. Uh, now becoming you know interested to invest in India so Lord, in coming 10 years you know there will be a big bloom in aerospace field all right to expedite expansion in Indian aerospace state government governments have also taken some you know steps like if you look at the Tamil Nadu government plans to establish an aero park for global aerospace and aeronautics industry in the area of design manufacturing and maintenance of aircraft the park will be similar to those in Dubai, China, China and uh, Singapore. The Andhra Pradesh government unveils plans of two aerospace precision engineering special economic zone in the state. The Tata Group and uh, 50 local industries propose to establish their units in the first of uh, the two special economic zones. If we look at the Karnataka, Karnataka government has not taken any initiative so far. Currently, only private sectors. SEJ has been set up by Quest Global in Welcome. Bangalore International Airport Limited BIL is also coming up with an aerospace uh, special economic zone of 1000 acres near Bangalore but without any government support. So Karnataka government also need to you know uh, uh, think about it because at present if we look at most of the aerospace companies more than 150 plus aerospace companies are situated in Bangalore. All right, so uh, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh are going to become a big, big, you know, uh, what's a hub for aerospace in coming 10 years. So some important issues affecting participation in India's aviation sector include high aerospace turbine fuel price, particularly is a big concern, right? So India is one of the most expensive places in the world to buy aerospace turbine fuel. So why basically these uh, you know prices are going high? There are various uh, kind of you know factors are there. Excise duties, 
Throughout fees charged by airport operators and state taxes are up to 30% of domestic flights result in cost structure that cannot support a competitive industry. All right. According to market estimation, aviation turbine fuel contributes to over 40% of the airline's operating costs. As a consequence, high ATA prices not only reduce profitability but increase fares that impacts fares and consequently tap it. So, as Indian uh, civil aviations are looking for you know some kind of competitive fare uh, they they are unable to you know fix up uh, those prices because of the high uh, cost of the aviation fuel so government should you know think of easing the excise duties and other charges to to make to give some flexibility to the civil aviation uh, players to do, to provide some competitive you know fares and other you know facilities second one is shortage of trend pilots as per the iata uh, had projected that industry will need 17000 new pilots annually you know in order to meet industry growth and to replace pilots who retire while the present uh, slump has dramatically you know reduced to the, the demand supply gap as the industry recovers and shortage will again reappear that means uh, in further 10 years there will be a huge demand for trained pilot skilled pilot uh, particularly in the civil uh, civil aviation which need to be fulfilled further regulatory easing and improvement in infrastructure fdi in transport and passenger airlines continues to be restricted and given the poor profitability of domestic carrier there is a need of the government to review the policies first Right, the physical and uh, technological infrastructure such as air traffic control, ETC and air side facilities at airports continue to remain key areas that need attention. Right, so to increase the passenger uh, safety, ETC towers need to be you know installed uh, nearby you know airport and all the major locations uh, during the flight. And uh, as aviation turbine fuel is a big concern, so government needs to think about their policies right about excise uh, duty uh, excise duty and other you know regulatory flexibilities should be provided if you want to bloom the you know civil aviation in india so selected major uh, selected uh, major indian it and eso companies so first is uh, satyam right satyam is the it company information technology awarded tire wall engineering supply status by its european aviation defense uh, system all right so introduced a unique digital design platform to perform real time simulation of designs and reduce the time to market and cost so last year satyam forged an alliance with the north crop broman and signed a multi layer multidisciplinary service agreement with hawker beechcraft corporation to provide design ca analysis product life cycle management and other services the second player is bipro Bipro had made an agreement to work jointly on commercial aerospace projects with Witten, BAE Systems, entered into the agreement with Boeing to develop wireless and other network technologies for aerospace related applications, also partnered with the Lockheed Martin to create demonstration centers showing new capabilities for linking multiple control centers, aircrafts and vehicles. Bipro became the largest hydraulic company in India and the second largest globally after an acquisition in Sweden. It is accessing, assessing the possibility of creating new designs for smart landing gears and rigs. The third, uh, the IT company is TCS, right? They partnered with Saab to establish Saab's aeronautical design and development center in India. TCS has also been investigating in uh, uh, investing uh, in capabilities such as hardware and software testing, additionally demonstration labs, innovation centers, embedded avionics systems and high-end design of large aircrafts. If we look at the SCL, uh, they have a member of Aerospace Network Research Consortium along with Bipro Technologies, ISC and Boeing selected by uh, Sircor Aviation as strategic partner for engineering and IT uh, uh, services. Last year, SCL partnered with Smith Aerospace to open a development center in Chennai. They have entered into a strategic relationship to serve as an extension of Rockwell Collins engineering centers to deliver high value services such as software, hardware and mechanical engineering for product development. The last one is Quest Global. Quest supports its aerospace customers on global programs related to aerostructures, engines, 
uh, accessories, actuation systems, aircraft interiors, and ground support equipments. It also specializes in uh, complete end-to-end -end solutions for aerospace industry, right from design and analysis to manufacturing. Quest has been selected as its E2S preferred supplier for engineering services, manufacturing capabilities, ability to offer offset fulfillment and risk sharing uh, partnership. The firm recently entered into JV to launch India's first independent processing facility for aerospace manufacturing and has set up a special economic zone in Belgaum. So basically if you look at uh, the major aerospace player in Bengaluru is the Quest Global. So they are basically working on design and development as well as they are supporting the industry in manufacturing as well. So in coming future uh, within five years right they are going to develop manufacturing you know uh, hub in the Bengaluru that's what is their plan. So if we look at the public sector aerospace industry uh, they are HAL right uh, what are their capabilities aircraft manufacturing and assembly design R&D tier 2 and 3 supply to the foreign original equipment manufacturers right they are particularly working in the military areas right they are developing the light combat aircraft drove licensed manufacturer for soviet russian origin craft Sukhoi 30 mki mig 21 27 piston and jet trainers mro for indian air force if we look at the national aerospace laboratory uh, they are aircraft manufacturing assembly design r d particularly civilian they have developed saras hansa regional craft under joint development with ATR. DIDO labs if we look at uh, they are developing the subsystems uh, manufacturing design and R&D particularly for military right so they they are developing uh, basically missiles, radars, avionics, uh, electronic warfare right suits etc. ISRO uh, they are expertise in satellite remote sensing geostationary launch vehicles GSLV right and space probes particularly segment is civilian inside satellite gslb pslb chandrayaan launch services for satellites if we look at the air india or boeing they are basically uh, mros for civilian airliners uh, mro for air india fleets particularly right if we look at the private players private sector and domestic firms tata excluding tcs uh, they are they have made tie up with sarkozy right IAL and Boeing right so their major products if we look at they they are working on composites right avionics electronic systems planned uh, aircrafts and subsystems assembly LNT uh, they had tie up with the EADS European Aerospace Defense System Boeing Lockheed Martin uh, they are basically LNT is doing only simulation work right CAD testing uh, computer -aided designing and testing uh, they are they are working on Mahindra and Mahindra uh, or Mahindra Satyam, uh, they are having tie up with the National Aerospace Laboratory. They are working on CAD testing, uh, IT and PLM solutions. Right, they are, they are, in future they are planning to uh, develop a small jet manufacturing and component design and manufacturing. If we look at the Infosys, Infosys uh, is having tie up with Boeing and Airbus. Uh, so they are working on CAD, computer aided designing, testing, IT and PLM solutions, embedded systems. All right. Uh, so, if we look at the Wipro, Wipro is having tie up with the British Aerospace BAE and Lockheed Martin, right? So, again, Wipro is working related to IT solutions, right? Computer aided designing, testing, IT, and PLM solutions, embedded systems. Taneja Aerospace, this has you know recently opened up in seven years back. They have grown very fastly, very rapidly. Right, they they have, they are now having tie up with the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, National Aerospace uh, Laboratory (NAL) and ISRO. Right, they are tie two and tie three companies. Uh, basically, they are doing computer aided designing, MRO services, dynamic technologies. Uh, right, this is another uh, company which is having tie up with HAL, DIDO, and EADS. They are also tie two and tie three companies. CAD and testing, Quest Global. Right. They are themselves, they have developed the special economic zone in Bangalore. They are tier 3 com components, CAD, testing, IT and PLM solution, embedded system. Then come to the SCL. SCL has uh, had tie up with the uh, General Electric, GE and Boeing. They are also working in uh, computer designing, testing, IT, PLM solutions, embedded systems. 
देन हेमको हेमको इज बेसिकली इज एम आर ओ कंपनी एम आर ओ कंपनी मेंटेनेंस रिपेयर एंड ओवरऑल सो दीज आर सम ऑफ दी यू नो मेजर पब्लिक सेक्टर एंड प्राइवेट सेक्टर यू नो फॉर्म्स विच आर वर्किंग इन इंडिया so major foreign players if we look at eats and airbus uh, they they are from europe uh, they are basically original equipment manufacturer uh, so india presents jvs plant with local players basically airbus is having its center in bangalore and basically they are dealing only with design and you know analysis part here and they are sending all the results data to uh, different countries where they are having their manufacturing hubs where finally the original equipment is getting manufactured then boeing boeing is from usa they are also having their center in bangalore but in india basically uh, till now they are working only with design and analysis right they are not doing any kind of manufacturing but in future they are planning uh, to go for uh, maintenance repair overall right if you look at the uac that is sukhoi and mig that is russian company uh, this is also original equipment manufacturer right uh, they are planning uh, to have a tie up with local players in india Lockheed Martin, that is again a USA company. Uh, last three, two years back only they came to India, and uh, now they have started uh, working basically on avionic systems, right? Uh, so they had some tie-up with local players. Dassault is a France, right? This is also original equipment manufacturer, multinational company. They also had some tie-up with the local players, right? Like Safran Aerospace is having very good, you know, tie-up with Dassault. Then Sarkozy, this is again USA, right? then thales snagma and iai right this is israel israel aerospace industry iai this is a tier 1 and tier 2 uh, organization basically so they had also set up their uh, techno technology center in bangalore 3 years back right so if we if we look at you know overall uh, how actually they are working they are working in coordination with local players right they are getting funded projects Uh, from the local player and uh, finally they are getting the work done here because the manpower cost you know uh, is less in india right so we are getting n number of engineers to work on these kind of you know projects so uh, they need to spend very less amount and they can done the work uh, preliminary work of design and analysis that's why they are sending all this project to the small players small companies and small companies are doing this analysis design part finally the results are you can say reports are sending to the original equipment manufacturer and then they further go for the next step of manufacturing so public sector undercare is uh, uh, undertaking our hl and uh, bel right then private companies uh, all it and uh, you know engineering uh, companies scl infosys kvas these are all private other players are tata groups and lnt automatic uh, component manufacturer m and m and tl taneja aerospace limited all right so top 6 challenges for indian uh, aerospace industry is access of technology first uh, it is very less so we need to be dependent on foreign players raw material availability is also a big concern with us right and access of funding government is not ready to spend easily funding on you know this kind of aerospace uh, you know <coughs> works so we need to look for some funding from outside or or if we are able uh, we are having very good links right we can get the funding so access of funding and certification process is very very lengthy as per dgc right so this uh, used to delay uh, the manufacturing uh, in india particularly and skill availability uh, we are lagging basically we don't have skilled uh, engineers so far but uh, as now you know uh, we have developed lot of you know we are giving lot of skills to our uh, you know new generation so coming future after 5 or 10 years definitely we'll have skilled labor available in india which will be having skilled in manufacturing and all but we are good in design and analysis part right and quality issues is another big concern these are the six concerns right in indian aerospace industry so if we look at the india's mro uh, destinations right first is air works india engineering private limited basically these are maintenance repair overall company right plans to invest approximately 120 us million dollar over next 3 years to establish a maintenance center for uh, planes it is the second phase airworks plans to overall engines and parts such as landing gears 
then second one is european aeronautics defense and space uh, company nv eds european aeronautics defense and space company signed a joint venture agreement with national aerospace company of india limited nacil right national aerospace company of india uh, limited which operates air india to build an aircraft mro center to joint venture uh, will initially maintain and repair airframes of nacil airbus planes and later also offer services to other airlines including non airbus aircrafts mro facilities to be established in delhi so indian airlines has signed an agreement with the airbus and bangalore based jupiter aerospace to form mro joint venture the joint venture is for uh, mro and life cycle support of commercial aircraft so these are the big players right basically three uh, four big players they, they are going to set up the mros uh, for maintenance of civilian aircrafts so uh, this some some of the you know major mros i have select, i have added here hamco hyderabad aircraft maintenance uh, company right hamco is an indian based third party aircraft maintenance organization for commercial planes services offered by hamco includes avionic electronics right wiring inspection airframe simulator divisions and manufacturing services right second one gmr group gmr group is one of the fastest growing bangalore headquarters infrastructure companies with interest to develop the airport right energy highways and urban infrastructures the company uses the public private uh, partnership uh, model and uh, has successfully implemented several infrastructure projects in india so gmr infrastructure limited is the infrastructure holding company formed to fund the capital requirements of infrastructure projects in the groups energy highways airport business it is undertaking the development of the infrastructure products through its various you know subsidiaries the groups other focus area is uh, uh, basically business with sugar as as uh, match product line right they are also planning to develop an mro center right uh, in india so they they are basically working uh, abroad also like united uk netherlands philippines austria mexico istanbul and turkey next one is airworks india engineering private limited established in 1951 airworks india engineering private limited offers several you know mro services right uh, starting from maintenance overall of you know uh, dakota plane the old ways we, we, uh, air force was using the dakota right now uh, in november 2007 airworks attracted two strategic investor investors try to broaden the quality strategic reach to company right so they had now tie up with the you know as i said uh, with ge also they had tie up to develop mro then max aerospace and aerospace limited established in 1994 the company provide engineering support for all major commercial and alliance aircraft operators in india and middle east right so basically they are Uh, also mro companies all right now come to the aviation safety right so aviation safety these are some of the standard you know uh, international uh, regulatory bodies which are controlling the passenger flights right first is faa in usa federal aviation administration then ja in european union joint aviation authority dgca in india directorate general of civil aviation FAA and JAS major functions include reviewing the design, manufacture, and maintenance of aircraft, setting minimum standards for crew trainings, right? Establishing operation requirement for airlines and airports, and conducting safety-related research and development works. In short, it, it sets the minimum safety standards for airlines and acts as a public, you know, watchdog for safety. These authorities are also responsible for developing, maintenance, and operating the nation's air traffic control systems. Right, so basically, these are all regulatory uh, regulatory bodies, right, situated in different uh, countries. FA is FA is and J jointly, you know, controlling all these, you know, uh, aviation, you know, uh, regulatory bodies. So every country is having its own aviation regulatory. Like for India, it is DGCA. Uh, similarly, for uh, you know, different countries, they are having their own aviation regulatory body, which which are which are following the guidelines of FA and J. so then come to the far that federal aviation regula- regulations so far are the rules prescribed by the federal aviation administration governing all aviation activities in united states all right 
so uh, it is having different parts right part 1 part 13 21 part 1 definition of abbreviations right part 13 investigation of enforcement of procedures part 21 talks about certification procedure uh, of production parts right basically for our purpose it is part 25 airworthiness standards transport category airplanes right then for different kind of planes they are different kind of airworthiness standards that need to be followed all right then aircraft certification if we look at aircraft certifications are of two types aircraft type certificate and certification of uh, airworthiness right so type certificate uh, faa certification process begins with design of an aircraft so faa aeronautic uh, aeronautical engineers participate in the design process they also oversee the construction and flight testing of prototype if all tests are uh, you know successfully completed faa issues the type certificate uh, for the new aircraft followed by a production certificate once FA and J is satisfied with the manufacturer has everything in place to properly duplicate the prototype so first phase when you are just starting the designing right you have to uh, uh, you will be investigated by uh, the this uh, FA and J you know aeronautics engineers the once you satisfy certain criteria you will be given type certificate then after that certificate of airworthiness will be given the final step in the aircraft certification is the issuance of an airworthiness certificate which essentially is FASJ's stamp of approval of each aircraft coming off the design line right so this will be given after the flight test uh, enough flight tests have been done so what is the type certificate basically a document by which authority states that the applicant has demonstrated compliance of a type design to all applicable requirements so the certificate is not in itself an authorization to fly right this is just preliminary uh, certificate so certificate of airworthiness is required to make your aircraft to go for flying right so type design is consisting of drawing and specifications that define the configuration and design of the product information on materials and processes right then uh, information on methods of manufacturing assembly so when you are applying right for uh, uh, type certificate right you have to provide these all details right drawing of aircraft you need to be provided with all configurations right information on material which material you are going to use and how by what processing you are getting that information how you are going to manufacture and assembling the things so these all things uh, you need to give to the FA and uh, JA and finally those uh, they will send the team to investigate uh, once uh, you know uh, after inspection if they are satisfied they will uh, issue the type certificate to you so a type certificate is produced for each type design like a300 a320 a340 etc so produced five to six years after applications right once once you have given the application it will take around five to six years to you know get the type certificate so a type certificate cannot be awarded until the applicant has demonstrated that aircraft meets all applicable joint aviation requirements and federal aviation regulation requirements which includes the standard at the effective date of application any amendments any special conditions prescribed by the airworthiness authority so european aviation safety agency easa approves the issue of type certificate airbus is the legal applicant and type certificate holder uh, basically the airbus without a type certificate then no uh, sellable products you cannot you know go for next stage of Airworthiness. If you don't have type certificate, uh, so prototype development. Once you get the type certificate, you can go for the prototype development. So initially, the applicant form submit documents to uh, their local aviation regulatory body, detailing how the proposed design and type would fulfill the airworthiness requirement. After investigations by the regulator, the final approval of such documents, right? Uh, become the basis of certification the firm allow follows it and draws a proposed timeline or timetable of action required for certification test with the application regulations to be applied uh, will usually be frozen for the application and given amount of time if uh, all conditions satisfy right then your uh, prototype uh, certificate will be issued to you so an initial design sample known as prototype is built initially they will make one prototype this refers to either aircraft or engine or propeller depending on the base of basis of certification normally a few prototypes are built each subject to different tests right the prototypes are first used for ground and system test one of the prototypes known as static airframe is subject to destructive testing right like crash test will be done right uh, 
uh, how it will you know sustain the crash so one prototype will be test for crashing uh, right another will for system test right afm test uh, will be carried out so various you know prototypes need to be uh, you know uh, manufactured and then uh, they will undergo different kind of testing so test results are compared with initial submitted calculations to establish the ultimate structural strength other prototype will undergo other system test until the satisfaction of regulators with all ground test completed prototype are made ready for flight test right the flight test are flown by specially approved flight test pilots who will fly the prototype to establish the ultimate flight limits which should be within the airworthiness rule if a long range airliner tests the flight test may cover the whole world right so it will take another 5 to 6 years right uh, during the uh, in the flight test and after that you will be given certification of uh, airworthiness so now come to the certification of airworthiness uh, so in parallel with the aircraft testing applicant uh, form also draws of maintenance programs to support continuous airworthiness after approval of the design the program is drawn with inputs from test results and also from initial customers engineering departments the proposed maintenance program is submitted uh, to the regulators for com uh, comment and approval so after successful uh, completion of the ground and flight test along with an approval approved maintenance program the prototype is approved and form is granted the type certificate for prototype right the legal term uh, for the form is now a type certificate holder subsequently the prototype now serves serves as the template for agra production as the agra rolling out uh, factory should be identical to the prototype and each given a serial number so first is the type certificate then followed by the prototyping right so prototype once you have done the prototype one will be kept as the standard and you need to follow the same design norms to create uh, other prototypes and some serial numbers will be given so if you want to change the type uh, certificate uh, it is very lengthy process often the basic design enhanced further by the type certificate holder for example increasing or decreasing an aircraft flight performance range and load like uh, we are having boeing 747 triple 7 right if if you are going for triple 7 is advanced version so if you want to go for some enhanced version of the same existing design again you have to apply for the type certificate then followed by the certification of airworthiness right it's not like uh, once you have got a certificate then you can go for some modification upgradation so the moment you do the upgradation again you have to apply from the start right and get all the certification so again the basic process of type certificate is repeated right uh, then after that your certification of airworthiness will be given so upon uh, successful completion of certificate program the original type certificate is amended to include the new variant right new variant like boeing 73 Uh, 7 ng or 737 to 600 so boeing has given various uh, you know variants of the aircraft those are upgraded version of the basic uh, prototype so for each version you have to take uh, uh, again certification right type certificate then uh, certificate of uh, certificate of uh, airworthiness Uh, so now come to the certificate of airworthiness basically it is a document to prove that design of aircraft complies with the design standards and is constructed in conformity with the approved design uh, which is given by the faa right certificate of airworthiness is produced for each aircraft right license to fly so ica rule says that every aircraft engaged in international navigation shall be provided with a certificate of airworthiness issued by the state in which it is registered right for uk it is ca for france it is a dgac for india it is a dg dgca normally issued for one year right or uh, can be three years but can expire earlier if maintenance inspection is not done and unapproved uh, um, mode is made or unplanted unplanned event happened so if a aircraft is modified uh, the certificate of airworthiness is invalidated then until such time the modification is approved by esa or civil aviation authority right then again you have to reapply and get the certification of airworthiness so normally displayed in flight deck if you want to see this it will be displayed in the flight deck so any aircraft cannot fly until or unless it gets the certification of airworthiness keep in mind uh, so as it is mentioned here initially it will be given only for one year right then based on the inspection you have to uh, you have to show some standard you know maintenance of your aircraft so every year you know team will come and do the inspection if they find it unsatisfactory that 
your maintenance is poor it can be withdrawn then again you have to reapply to get the certification of certificate of airworthiness now if you come to the aerospace manufacturing right so world aircraft manufacturing industry divided into two uh, basic uh, you know category one is called military and space aerostructures second one is commercial aircrafts so military and space aerostructure it will be developing the missile rockets and all right this all is a different segment right the second segment is commercial aircraft right and then commercial aircraft further divided two category passenger aircraft and cargo aircraft right then passenger aircraft again further divided two category large civilian aircraft and small to medium sized aircraft if you look at the a380 there is a large civilian aircraft right and all boeing uh, 747 and these are all these are small to medium you know sized aircraft so uh, uh, roughly in you know, overview is that manufacturing is divided into two main uh, you know uh, category one is called military and space second one is commercial then further commercial divided into two category passenger and uh, cargo that is called transport then passenger aircraft further uh, subdivided into two categories large civilian aircraft and small to medium size aircraft so large aircraft manufacturing companies uh, if we look at uh, the large aircraft manufacturing activities are mainly carried out by the big giant right uh, uh, basically boeing company of the usa and airbus company right formerly it is known as airbus industries based in european union uh, these two key companies uh, com compete against each other intense intensely although there are other large aircraft manufacturers in for example russia their impact in industry is largely insignificant all right with their customer base being mainly airlines from russia vietnam and the country comprising the former soviet soviet union so basically if we look at the, these two are the well known you know large aircraft manufacturer company boeing and airbus uh, so if we compare the Boeing and the Airbus right particularly Boeing uh, first aircraft was KM 717 right so uh, whatever features are there the same features almost the same feature with the improved version were given by the Airbus in 318 right similarly again
sorry guys for disturbance actually uh, power gone in between uh, because of that it happened now again I am resuming it uh, so if we uh, compare uh, Boeing and Airbus those are competitor right so after Boeing 717 Boeing 737 came into uh, market right so competitor of it is A320 then Boeing has given two more variants right 767 and 777 with advanced version of navigations right so this will be given tight competition with the Airbus 340 similarly uh, if we look at the aircraft A380 that is ultra high capacity airliner UHCA both to compete its own range of products and to break the dominance that Boeing had enjoyed in the markets uh, segment since the early 1970s right with the 747 so now Airbus is giving lot of competition right uh, particularly uh, to the Boeing so 2007 Airbus delivers first A380 right 800 and 2000, uh, uh, you know it, it was started in 1992 itself when Boeing cancelled similar projects right then large aircraft division was formed in 1996 right and after that they started working over this project in 2000 uh, the uh, commercial launch of A3 XX series was done 2001 Airbus consortium is masked 2002 component manufacturing started and 2004 first engine delivered and 2005 the first maiden flight for A380 was done you look at the time duration it started from 1996 and 2005 right then 2006 certification and uh, delay some delay in certification happened in 2007 the first uh, you know Airbus delivers first A380 uh, uh, to the world so it, it took almost more than 15 to 16 years to develop the A380 so market size and share of both companies if we look at uh, you know as a result of early global leadership in US aircraft industry especially in the post world war II economic booms the United States has been able to develop a highly competitive aircraft manufacturing industry in the forefront was the Boeing uh, company however since the emergence of Airbus you know company and especially since increasing favorable uh, reputation and reliability of its varied range of aircraft there has been a steady increase in Airbus shares uh, for the large aircraft manufacturing market so uh, now you know at present Airbus is much reliable compared to Boeing but uh, you know earlier days uh, Boeing uh, was dominating uh, the market so if you look at the civilian uh, aircraft model it will be something like this right uh, so already anatomy of aircraft got covered somewhere right this is a wind shield and uh, this is the cockpit area if you look at front nose then it, this complete future has started so this is the man wing right if man wing if you look at wing uh, engines are mounted uh, downside of the wing right it's here these are the landing gears right the landing gears stud will be there and wheel will be there stud is this vertical bumper stud and this is a wheel is there so these are you know uh, what we say uh, these are not fixed under gears right they can be uh, gone inside the wing right so inside the wing or within the fuselage space will be provided right to retract the landing gears inside so if you look at the wing you know wing will have slat here leading a slat and then flaps inner portion mobile component is flap right spoiler will be on the top of the wing here and aileron will be at nearby tip this is the aileron right and these are the wing lids basically wing lids used to provide to avoid any kind of side you know uh, cross linking of the flow right because uh, this is a three dimensional uh, uh, wing so some flow will be happening in this direction so this direction wind should not you know combined with the top uh, top flow if it happens it will form a circulatory flow at the tip which is undesirable basically that will increase the induced drag right so that will study in aerodynamics uh, when uh, there i will discussing about that so over this at the top of the fuselage small uh, you know projected uh, you know plate kind of structure is there is called antenna right if you come to the impenance section here impenance section elevator is there on horizontal stabilizer right rudder is here on vertical stabilizer right so the vertical stabilizer is horizontal stabilizer so this is a very simple uh, design for civilian aircraft if you look at the fighter aircraft it will be slightly complex right but uh, major components will be same right like we were using in that so this is the long nose landing gear and uh, two main landing gears will be under the wing so this is called tricycle landing gear arrangement this is called nose is called redome right at the redome this pointed uh, thing you are seeing this is called bitard probe 
and one more pitot probe is here so in a fighter aircraft may have two to ten pitot probe uh, pitot, pitot probes uh, installed at various locations so this is the area where pilot used to be seated this is called canopy and this is cockpit a cockpit outer uh, you know a glass kind of fiber kind of structure is present that is called canopy leading edge wing uh, is here this completed wing this is a leading edge this is a trailing edge and all flap and alloy is similar like you know passenger aircraft here uh, horizontal stabilizer is here right and vertical stabilizer is here right and on both of these vertical dial uh, your rudders will be there to control the motions right so engine will be situated here right so this is the intake basically so engine will be in a central uh, body of the you know aircraft back side of the just back side of the pilot here engine will be installed right this is the nozzle engine exhaust right through which uh, gases will come at a very high speed and you will get the thrust and this is the intake through which air will go inside the engine and burning takes place and finally you know will get the thrust so this is the general anatomy of the military aircraft this was the passenger aircraft so with this i am closing today's uh, discussion if you are having any query feel free to post in the comment section right so thank you for your patience have a nice day good day